Today we're going to be looking at torque and calculating torque. Uh, to calculate the magnitude for torque is, uh, is not too difficult to process, uh, but torque as a concept and, uh, and calculating a direction for torque can be a little trickier. We've got this vector, uh, vector operation that we haven't dealt with before called the cross product. Uh, the magnitude for the torque, and that's what these little absolute value looking lines uh, mean, it's just the magnitude of a force, so no direction information, is just going to be the, uh, um, the R vector, that's the position vector of the force, and that's compared to some point where an object pivots about. So you know, maybe we have a, uh, you know, a door that has a, a hinge, we're looking down on this door, and you know, maybe we've got a force F here, and then R would be a vector that goes from the hinge to that location where the door is, uh, uh, where the where the force is being applied. And so, in this one, we we care about uh, what this distance is, um, and we also care about the part of this force that's perpendicular to this position vector. So we could break that up into the part that's perpendicular and the part that's parallel to R. And this would be F perpendicular. So the other part of this, I can move that down here since you can move vectors wherever you want them to, uh, to be, that'd be F parallel. And we can see, you know, if, if you pull on this end of a door, you're not going to cause any rotation for the door, of course. So that's not going to be um, involved in our, in our torque, our rotational force um, idea here. Now really, if we want to get into um, technicalities and, and the specifics of how torque is calculated, torque is a vector, and it's calculated by doing what's called the cross product of R and F. Now the magnitude we can get pretty easily there um, just by, by doing a little bit of trig, figuring out what this distance is and what this part of the force is. We can calculate what our magnitude is. Uh, but our, uh, our direction is going to be a little bit trickier and we have to use something called the right hand rule for this. So the switch over to this format for a minute uh, so you can see what my hands are doing here. So first off, right hand, it's the one that uh, doesn't make an L. Well, okay, I guess they both make L's, but you know which hand is the right hand. Uh, so first rule, middle finger, first, or sorry, index finger, first rule, uh, points in the direction of the position vector for where that force is located. And I'm measuring relative to my pivot point over here, so this is where my hinge is. So just like if you were pointing someone and telling them where to go, where the location of something was, you're using your pointer finger for that. Your second finger, your middle finger, that's your F finger. And you can say F stands for whatever you want, but I'm going to say F stands for force. So I need my index finger pointing in the direction of my R vector, my middle finger pointing in the direction of the, uh, the F vector. And then I want to do that so that my pointer finger is fully extended here. So none of this stuff going on to try and get it into the right direction. Extend it all the way just like you were pointing at something. Any bending that needs to take place, that should happen with your middle finger. Okay? So from 0 degrees different from R to 90 degrees different from R. And then you can rotate your whole arm as, as needed to make this work. So for this one, I've got my R value going this way, so I'm pointing in that direction. I need my middle finger to line up with, uh, with F, so I'm going to have to rotate my hand this direction and get my uh, middle finger lined up with F there. So my pointer finger is still pointing to the right, my middle finger is pointing in the direction of F, then extend my thumb all the way and it's pointing right out toward the camera. My torque then is in this direction. Now, torque, since it's coming out of the board, it's tough to draw that arrow. So we generally show it like this. It's a circle with a little dot in it. Think about an arrow, arrow like an archer would shoot at you. 
So if it's coming towards you, you see the point of that arrow coming right at you. That's the point of the arrow. So this is out of the board or out of the page. Now let's say we had a different situation and we had force going uh, instead of up and to the right, we'll have it go down and to the right. And we need to find out what our torque is again. So this time I get my pointer finger and point in the direction of R right there and then extend my middle finger and we can get it uh, lined up with F. So pointer finger still pointed to the right, middle finger is lined up with F and now I extend my thumb and this time it's going in toward the board. And so to show that, we still think about the arrow like an archer uh, shoots, but this time we see the little feathers at the back of that arrow. So we see a little X shape in that arrow. So this is into the board, or on paper, be into the page. And that's the right-hand rule for two.